This right here is my Raspberry Pi 4. It's a mini little computer which runs Linux and this is pretty much used for running small projects and the amount of projects that you can use and actually do on this, I have done none of them. So I've decided it's time to put this into good use and I was thinking what is the most funnest thing that I can do and it's to actually play some nice retro games. So in this video I'm going to show you how to load up some old school games on this using RetroPy and yeah, let's get into it. If you are new here, my name is Austin Barito. I'm an infrastructure engineer currently dabbling with new technologies such as Linux and this is where the Raspberry Pi comes in and making these videos to not only help myself but also to help you guys to become better engineers. Firstly, what is required? Obviously, you need a Raspberry Pi. Um, currently, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4. I would recommend anything above a 4, so a 4 or a 5. Um, you require your uh, micro SD card. Uh, I'm currently using a 32 GB with the micro SD card reader so that you can load up RetroPie OS on it. You will also require a monitor, so I've got my monitor here. Oh, even the TV will work because it's a RetroPie, it's a gaming console, so yeah, you can even use uh, a TV if you have it in place. And I will be eventually moving my console to my downstairs TV. The other thing that's required is um, an HDMI cable to connect to your TV, of course. Um, a controller but, or a keyboard will also do. But I'm currently using this old school control which I got off Amazon. Um, I'll put the links in the description. You will also require a power supply to power up your Raspberry Pi and an optional a case. I've got a, like a Raspberry Pi case over here, once again from Amazon. And once you've got all your hardware set up, next we need to actually get the RetroPie OS downloaded into our SD card. If you want to head over to retropie.org.uk and once you're on the website, this is the RetroPie website, you go to download and from download you will click Raspberry Pi 4 slash 400 and just wait for the download to complete while the OS is actually getting downloaded from RetroPy you will need to download this software which will it, which will allow you to flash the OS into an SD card so I'm currently using a Mac OS uh, an Apple silicon chip so ARM64 and here we go so my software is downloaded and now it's time to just install it quickly. Just drop it into applications. Oh, here we go. Just there. Accept. Make sure your SD card is actually completely empty or you're willing to lose all the files within it because once you do the flashing of the OS onto this card, everything will be deleted. So to flash the OS, make sure to select the RetroPie um, image that you just downloaded. For the target, select your Apple Reader. So it, my SD card is 32 GB, so make sure you select the correct one, the two hidden, and that's obviously the system drive of a Mac OS, which I'm going to select. And just click on flash password to allow no suspicious activity the time of completion is around two minutes and once the process of the flashing is completed uh, place the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and now is the fun stuff now is when you can power the machine up and get it all set up with your monitor I've currently set it up it's not powered on just gonna power on now it's connected to an HDMI cable. It's my controller here. And I'm gonna use this monitor, so I have to just change it from my Mac to my Raspberry Pi. Okay, sorry about the video quality right now because I'm recording from my iPhone. I'm trying to capture the screen physically. And I can tell it's not the best quality, but right now we are on the welcome page and we have to configure the controller. So let's press the button hey old A button and as you can see I'm currently using a very basic old school controller so you could also use a PS3 controller PS4 controller which will have more joysticks more options 
So on this list, I will actually be skipping some of the um, controls because I won't have enough buttons as you can see. Um, so let's go first D-pad up, down, left, right, start button, select, A, B, X, Y, left shoulder, right shoulder, and as you can see, I've already used all my buttons up and there's still some more options. I will just need to skip these ones. So hold any button to skip. Yep, skip this, skip this. So my hotkey is actually the select and start together. I've already configured the controller, but I'm also gonna con configure the keyboard so that this is like more for backup and also cause it helped me set up a password much more easier. I would recommend using a different controller because you won't get to play games on maybe the Neo Genesis console. Um, hopefully I'm saying it right. Um, consoles that require the extra uh, features and the extra buttons. I'll, right now I'm just going to be playing some very old school games which work with this controller. As I can see there are a couple of items that we need to actually go through and configure. So we have already done the controller, that's the main one. We need to give it a host name, a password, we need to connect to the Wi-Fi, really important. And um, need to enable localization and also SSH, 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 yeah, somewhat a tongue twister for me. Um, so this will allow me to actually copy over ROMs from my Mac to my RetroPie. Let's go to set up your Wi-Fi. Let's search for your Wi-Fi networks. And I can see mine is just down here. So this is where the keyboard comes handy. So after successfully connecting your Wi-Fi, you can go to show IP so that you know your IP address of your RetroPie. And just make a note of your IP address. Mine is gonna be 192.168.4.36. Once you have the configuration of the RetroPie, go down to recipe config. Click on A, and once you're in this setting, the controllers it kind of switches. So it's actually you have to click on the arrow to actually select. So a left is unselected, right selects it, and B is to choose the option. Let's set the host name host name up. I'm gonna keep my machine name RetroPie because it will be solely used for as a RetroPie and select OK. We have already configured the host name and we need to also set up the password. So highlight that and I'm gonna select OK. Oh, okay. So the Raspberry Pi passwords come right at the bottom. Is this down here? Yeah. Just gonna enter my password. And this is where the keyboard comes handy. And the next option that we need to change will be in the fifth option, that is localization. Select, go down to time zones. So I'm running Europe, London. Go back to the localization options. Go to WLAN country and set that up. So you can use your shoulder buttons to scroll down quickly. I'm in GV Britain UK. Select it and we are good to go. Next option is the SS SSH enabling that. So that'll be in third interface option. Select it, press B to connect. B2, there you go. Would you like to SSH server to be enabled? Click on yes. And it's enabled. Go all the way down to finish and reboot your system. Now, since we already got a Raspberry Pi configured, it's time to put some games, put some ROMs onto the system. 
Now, I'm not going to show you how to get ROM, but I'm going to show you how to actually move the ROMs from your Mac or your PC to your Raspberry Pi system. So the first thing I would like to do right now is actually remote into, like SSH into my RetroPi and actually see the folder structure of the system. So I'm going to open my terminal, SSH, SSH, SSH to pi at 192.168.4.36. I hope you have already made a note of your IP address. Let's go. Oops, yes. And password. Oh man, I am typing so badly right now. It's incorrect, yes. And I am in. So currently we are in the RetroPi system. So if I do an LS, yep. Currently I'm in the home directory. And if I go to the RetroPi directory, wait, hold on, sorry. I don't think I should put that in there. Yeah. So I'm currently learning Linux and this is where some of your Linux skills will come handy. So another LS to see what's exactly in here. And as you can see, there is ROMs. So let's go into that. And yeah, at the bottom you can see all the game consoles that are there and these are all folders. So once you have your games, you have to put them into the specific folder. For example, if you have an NES game, the ROMs need to be in the NES folder. So currently I have games for the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. So NES and and SNES. I currently just have Contra, Excite Bike, and Mario. And for the Super Nintendo, I have Fatal Fury, Ultimate Mortal Kombat, and Wolfstein. So these are old school games that I should play when I was a kid. And I remember these games vividly, like especially Contra, because my brother used to be really good at it. Next thing we have to do is open another terminal window. The following command should work across the board if you're on the Windows machine or on a Mac. And we're going to use SCP command, so that's a secure copy protocol. So the location uses ASMB, downloads ROMs and ES to target all the files and folders within that folder to the target, which is pi as the username and my IP address for the RetroPi. Total RetroPi ROMs and ES is the location that I needed to go. So enter my password and there you have it guys, it is gone. And the next is the Super Nintendo and change the location, the source and once again continue, password prompt. And there you go guys, it is all set up. Now, back to switching to my RetroPi and we'll start playing some games. So once you've got your ROMs onto your RetroPi, we just need to do a little bit more customization. So these are the couple of things that I would do. Go to the main menu, go to the UI settings, and we go down to game list, view style, and select grid. It just gives it a much, much more neater appearance. The other option that I will change is ignore articles. Turn that on so that it can actually ignore articles such as A and the and makes the gaming organization much more neater. Go to start and scrape from screen scrape or the game's DB. And let's see if it actually works for me. All games to select it yes yes start that oh okay it's doing something so what this does is actually get the images for your games so that doesn't look very 
empty and like a default setting. Uh, there's the other thing that I should have selected is actually um, not require user input. So right now I have to actually select things manually. And as you can see, it's got its thumbnails basically. And let's start with the very old school game. And there you have it guys, it is actually up and running. Whoa, what happened there? Okay, so I just went back, reconfigured the controller, so I did a little bit of a mistake and right at the end when it says select a hotkey, I managed to put it as star. So that's why whenever I load up the game, it took me back when I tried to press start. So now my hotkey is actually select. So let's go. And there you have it guys, we are in Mario World. I forgot to jump. Okay, now I'm jumping. As you, as you can see, I'm not really good at this. Haha. <laughs> so as you can see, old school games, you can all play this using your retro pie and currently I have this as my bare bones. Um, let me show you. So that is currently how it looks and now I'm just gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna place the case in, place the, it comes with a nice fan inside as well and I'm gonna take it downstairs and I'm gonna actually set it up on my TV and actually play the game on a bigger screen. So I'll catch you soon. Run, run, run. Don't get hit. Okay, so that's how you set up a retro pie. And as you could see, I was having good fun with my wife playing Contra. And if you guys like this video, uh, please make sure to like and subscribe. And yeah, there'll be more videos regarding tech and also regarding how to improve our skills as engineers. So I'll see you guys on the next one.